Hi again, I'm Gazza. Today I acquired this second-hand refractor telescope. Yeah, it's a Saxon brand as you can see, and it's a quite a large aperture, 90mm for a focal length of 910. The telescope itself structurally uh, seems fine, there's nothing broken. The only thing that's a little bit interesting or peculiar is uh, the focusing tube. Have a look at this. For some reason, it slips out. I have no idea why. That'll be something to investigate and have a look at. So the telescope is actually made of really heavy duty material. It's pretty sturdy. Uh, some parts are pretty heavy. Um, this is actually a very heavy duty as alt mount. Uh, what I'm finding really surprising is actually nothing moves. So the uh, slow motion controllers don't move. Looks like it's all seized. A uh, whole lot of rust build up and gunk over time. Just means that nothing's working at all. So it'll all need to be stripped down taken apart, cleaned up and reassembled. I actually went and printed a copy of the manual just to get a better idea of how to use the different parts, but the manual isn't very helpful. Uh, the objective lens, like I said, is in really good condition. And uh, just a bit of a close-up, you get an idea of the actual scale itself. The azimuth mount is a pretty big. I'm unable to move it in altitude or azimuth. I don't want to put too much pressure on it because I don't want to break it. But I'll just take you through a quick tour. Well, the telescope itself, and there's a lens there, just needs a clean, otherwise really good condition, no scratches, finder scope is in good condition, there is an eyepiece, and like I said, the focusing tube is loose for some reason. Tripod is mostly fine. It's missing the accessories tray. And there's a few bits missing here as well, so we have to build those. Generally, the hardest, uh, the most work required on this entire telescope will be the mount. As you can see, a whole lot of rust build up everywhere and gunk. So we just need to clean that up. The rest of the tripod is fine. We'll still take it all apart just to clean up all the rust from all the bolts. So I'm going to start with taking the tripod apart, removing the tube. I'll work from the bottom up, so I'll clean up all the legs, remove all the rust from all the fittings and the screws, and then I'll work on the mount, and then I'll work on the optical tube itself. So again, a closer look at the tripod. Uh, there are some parts that are broken. For example, where this tripod leg meets the actual mount are these little uh, plastic studs that fit in there. This one's actually broken off like that. It's usually a bit longer than that. It slides right in and it's secured by these screws. So that's broken. I have to take it out, find a way to glue it back in and put it back in. All the screws here have got rust on them. All these have got the screws, all the screws have fallen off, so you have to put these back in. And screws on the end. So I'm gonna dismantle this tripod down to last uh, each single bolt, and then we'll uh, give it a good clean. I've taken the entire tripod apart and there's all the components I could take it down to. I've even disassembled the little spiderweb support mechanism in the middle. Just getting a little bit closer. You'll just see here the extent of the rust on all the metallic parts. 
Uh, this thing was definitely left outside for extended periods of time. And there's it broken. Bracket I was telling you about earlier on. These are the support iron rods for the actual spider web itself. And they're all very rusty. Even one of them has a bent screw right there which we'll have to fix up. I'm going to clean them in sections, that way I can assemble in a logical order rather than having it all mixed up. So initially I'm going to start with these screws here. These screws allow the actual tripod legs to be mounted onto the mount itself. So I'll start with those first, and then we'll move on to the actual feet of the tripod legs. And then anything that's made of plastic or aluminium, you can just go ahead and clean those up with uh, what a detergent and so I'll be using a Dremel tool with the uh, brush attachment to remove all the rust from the screws I find it most convenient and quick uh, as always when using equipment which uh, rotate at high speed always wear the appropriate uh, protection right so I have all the parts laid out for the tripod uh, that piece that was broken earlier on I repaired that with a bit of epoxy. Um, all, par all metallic parts have had the rust removed. Um, it, however, there are a few screws missing for these components here. These are the ones that mount the uh, spider webs. So I'm going to have to find replacement screws for them. Otherwise, uh, all parts have been cleaned. And that's ready to be uh, reassembled. So the tripod is actually complete. I've got it uh, held together by friction there because it has to be mounted onto the actual mount itself. Uh, so all that's missing is just a tray which I'll build for it. And then from here we're going to move on to the actual mount itself. After applying a little bit of force on the slow motion controllers I actually get a little bit of movement on both as and altitude. Uh, what I'm starting to do is actually uh, course rotate the azimuth axes and course rotate the altitude. Now when I read the instructions it just says you move it but when I try and apply any bit of pressure it doesn't move at all so what I'll do is I think I'll just start taking it apart and then slowly clean out the, uh, the rust. What I've also noticed is that there's this tensioning knob here. I have no idea what it does. When I turn it just the actual um, axle is stuck so we'll have to figure out what this does. I think I think it's to allow for coarse azimuth adjustment and then you tighten it and then you use the control knob for fine tuning. So we'll just have to see how that goes. And uh, so I'll just take it apart bit by bit and see if we can uh, make any progress on it.
So I finished taking apart as much as possible of the mount. I managed to free up the azimuth range here. Control cables are all fine. Uh, these are the bolts. These are the bolts for the azimuth axle. That's the bolt for the altitude axle. I'm going to be cleaning those up. Just have a look at this mounting plate. Seems like it was an aftermarket or after purchase job. Looks like uh, it's been drawn and cut probably by hand as well. Maybe the mount was a working at the time they purchased it. I'm not really sure. And these are the attachments for the smooth control. The um, the screws themselves have just got a lot of dirt. So I'm not going to take them out. I'm just going to give them a really good clean. And there's that one for the altitude. It's an azimuth altitude. There's the altitude axis. Uh, it's got a little bit of rust on two of those threads. It doesn't go all the way through. I've just checked it. So I'll just give it a quick clean. And there's the azimuth axis. No rust, it's just got a bit of grease there, so we'll just keep that on and reuse it for later. As you can see, the mount has been refurbished. I can now easily move the altitude and azimuth, as well as the slow motion controllers for both alpha and azimuth. So that's all been repaired and refurbished. I've also noted that the previous owners broke off the plate, so they introduced a secondary plate, which is fine. It still serves the same purpose. I'm not gonna make any modifications to it because it still satisfies the intent and also noted here the uh, tightening knob for the azimuth axis has also been repaired. Now from here I'm going to mount it back onto the tripod and then I'll move on to the optical tube assembly. Right, so here's the entire optical tube assembly disassembled. This is the lens cell. I'll give it a good clean, just like um, I've shown in my other videos. The focuser needs a bit of work because the focusing tube is loose. Also, the focusing knob is bent. Looks like this thing was dropped and landed on the focusing knob. It'll take quite a bit of force to actually bend that piece of metal. The uh, finder scope is in okay condition. The lens needs a bit of clean, otherwise, there's no break hitters there. The uh, prism needs a bit of a clean, and there's the eyepiece will give that a bit of a clean. For some reason there is um, just a bit of dirt there, will give it a really good clean as well. The uh, focuser tube, the focuser tube itself, teeth seem to be in good order, seem to be a little bit worn down here, but generally okay, so we'll give it a quick test to see what's wrong with it. Um, the tube itself, uh, there's no rust on it, so I have to give it a good clean. But some of the screws do have a bit of rust, so we'll uh, we'll just remove the rust off that before putting it back together. So there is the focusing axle. One of the sides is actually bent, so I'm going to try and bend it back with either some pliers or a hammer. And I think I figured out why the draw tube is loose. I'm going to get the draw tube out. So you can see those supporting panels on the bottom. There's actually one missing from the top. So if we put that support, if we put that tube back in, like so.
so you see there's a bit of a an air gap there so I'll be trying to uh, put a strip there to allow the tube to slide in and out without wiggling and wobbling and hopefully that should provide enough meshing for the actual focuser axle and knob to move the tube in and out. It's uh, looking uh, complete. Telescope now moves smoothly in both axes, both for course adjustment and for fine adjustment. The focuser is now working nice and smooth. The objective lens was given a just a quick dust off. Otherwise, it's in pretty good condition, so it didn't need to go into too much uh, cleaning effort there. Uh, for details on how to clean the objective lens, uh, you just have to check out my videos on how I was cleaning the Celestron objective lens. Similar principle. The mount itself is pretty sturdy. One thing I haven't done yet is build the tray, but we'll get to that later. But as far as functionality is concerned, yeah, we'll call this telescope complete. Just did some testing against Jupiter and Saturn. What I did notice is that the provided eyepiece that came with it is actually low quality. So I used the SV Bonnie uh, eyepiece, 25mm eyepiece, as well as the Barlow, and got some uh, sharp images of both Jupiter and Saturn. Noting this is a, an achromatic refractor there was some spherical aberration. But once you centered the object in the middle of the field of view, the aberration uh, was uh, reduced to a minimum. That's what you get for paying hundreds of dollars for a refractor, as opposed to a thousand dollars plus. But for the price I intend to sell it at, the return on investment is well worth it. And uh, thanks uh, very much for watching. Um, I actually enjoyed uh, restoring this telescope, so I really envy the uh, next uh, owner of this piece of equipment. And always remember, if there's something you can fix rather than buy brand new, it's always worth a shot. You get more enjoyment out of it, and, you plus, and you'll save uh, a lot of money.